ओम साईराम श्री साई सच्चरित्र चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू रेस्क्यूज फ्रॉम सर्पेंट बाइट्स बाळासाहेब मिरीकर बापूसाहेब बुती अमीर शक्कर हेमाड पंत बाबास ओपिनियन रिगार्डिंग किलिंग ऑफ सर्पंट प्रिलिमिनरी हाऊ टू मेडिटेट ऑन बाबा नो वन हॅज बीन एबल टू फॅदम द नेचर ऑर द फॉर्म ऑफ ऑल माईटी इवन द वेदास अँड द थाउजंड टंग शेषा आर नॉट एबल टू डिस्क्राईब इट फुली द डेवोटीज ऑल्सो के नॉट नो बट ओनली लुक ॲट द फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड फॉर दे नो दॅट हिज फीट आर देअर ओनली रेफ्यूज दे नो नो अदर मेथड ऑफ अटेनिंग द सुप्रीम गोल ऑफ लाईफ एक्सेप्ट मेडिटेटिंग ऑन द होली फीट हेमाड पंत सजेस्ट अन इझी वे ऑफ डेवोशन अँड मेडिटेशन ॲज फॉलोज As the dark fortnight of every month wears out gradually the moonlight also wanes in the same degree and on the new moon day we do not see the moon at all therefore when the bright fortnight begins people are very anxious to see the moon on the first day the moon is not seen on the second day she emerges as a thin crescent then the people are asked to see the moon through the opening between the two branches of a tree When they begin to see through this aperture eagerly the distinct small crescent of the moon comes to their sight following this instance let us see baba's form look at baba's posture how fine it is he is sitting with his legs folded his right leg held across the left knee the fingers of his left hand are spread on the right foot on the toe are spread his two fingers the index and the middle ones By this posture Baba seems to say if you want to see my true form be egoless and most humble and meditate on my toe through the opening between the index and the middle fingers and then you will be able to see my light Now let us turn to Baba's life Shirdi had become a place of pilgrimage on account of Baba's stay there people from all quarters began to flock there and both the rich and the poor began to be benefited in more ways than one who can describe baba's boundless love and his wonderful knowledge and his all pervasiveness blessed is he who can experience these sometimes baba observed long silence which was in a way his dissertion on brahma at other times he was pure consciousness bliss incarnate surrounded by his devotees sometimes he spoke in parables and at other times indulged in wit and humor at times he was quite calm and at times he seemed enraged sometimes he gave his teachings in a nutshell and at other times he argued at length many a time he was very direct in this way he gave varied instructions to many accordingly to their requirements his life was therefore inscrutable beyond the ken of our mind intellect and speech a longing to see his face to talk with him and hear his leelas were never satisfied still we were overflowing with joy we can gauge the showers of rain capture the wind in a leather bag but who can measure his leelas now we deal here with one aspect of them that is how he anticipated or forestalled the calamities of his devotees and warned them in time bala saheb mirikar बाळासाहेब मिरीकर सन ऑफ सरदार काकासाहेब मिरीकर वॉज मामलेतदार ऑफ कोपरगाव ही वॉज गोईंग ऑन अ टूअर टू चैताली ऑन द वे ही केम टू शिर्डी टू सी बाबा वेन ही वेंट टू द मस्जिद अँड प्रॉस्टेटेड हिमसेल्फ बिफोर बाबा द युजल कॉन्वर्सेशन रिगार्डिंग हेल्थ अँड अदर मॅटर्स कमेन्स्ड वेन बाबा साऊंडेड अ नोट ऑफ वॉर्निंग डू यू नो आर द्वारका माई ॲज बाळासाहेब डिड नॉट अंडरस्टँड ही केप्ट क्वाइट Baba continued This is our Dwarka Mai where you are sitting She wards off all dangers and anxieties of the children who sit on her lap This Masjid Mai its preceding deity is very merciful She is the merciful mother of the simple devotees whom she will save in calamities Once a person sits on her lap all his troubles are over He who rests in her shade gets bliss Then Baba gave him udi and placed his hand on his head. When Baba Sahib was about to depart, he again said, 
do you know the lamba baba long gentleman that is serpent and then closing the left fist he brought it under the right elbow and moving his left arm like the hood of a serpent said he is so terrible but what can he do to the children of dwarka mai when the dwarka mai that's its preceding deity protects what can the serpent do all who were present there were curious to know the meaning of all this and its reference to mirikar but none had the courage to ask baba about it then bala sahib saluted baba and left the masjid with shama baba called shama back and asked him to accompany bala sahib and enjoy the chaitali trip shama came to bala sahib and told him that he would go with him according to baba's wish bala sahib replied that he did not need to come as it would be inconvenient shama returned to baba and told him what bala sahib said to him baba said all right do not go we should mean well and do well whatever is destined to happen will happen in the meanwhile bala sahib thought it over again and calling shama asked him to accompany him then shama went again to baba and after taking his leave started with bala sahib in the tanga they reached chaitali at 9 pm and encamped in the maruti temple the office people had not come so they sat in the temple talking and chit chatting bala sahib was sitting on a mat reading a newspaper his uparni that is the upper dhotar was spread across his waist and on it a snake was sitting unnoticed it began to move with a hissing sound which was heard by the pew he brought a lantern saw the snake and raised an alarm serpent serpent bala sahib was frightened and began to quiver shama was also stunned then he and others moved quietly and took sticks and clubs in their hands the snake slowly came down the waist and moved away from bala sahib and it was immediately done to death thus this calamity which was prophesied by baba was averted and bala sahib's devotion in baba was confirmed papu sahib puti a great astrologer named nana sahib dengre told papu sahib puti who was then in shirdi today is an inauspicious day for you there is danger to your life this made papu sahib restless when they as usual came to the masjid baba said to papu sahib what does this nana say he foretells death for you well you need not be afraid tell him let us see how death kills then later in the evening papu sahib went to his privy for easing himself where he saw a snake his servant saw it and lifted a stone to strike it papu sahib asked him to give a big stick but before the servant turned with the stick the snake was seen moving away and soon disappeared papu sahib remembered baba's words of fearlessness amir shakkar Amir Shakkar was a native of the village Korhali in Kopargaon taluka. He belonged to the butcher caste. He worked as a commissioner agent in Bandra, that's Mumbai, and was well known there. He once suffered from rheumatism, which gave him much pain. He then remembered Allah, that's God, left his business and went to Shirdi and prayed to Baba to relieve him from his malady. Baba then stationed him in the Chaudi The Saudi was then a damn unhealthy place unfit for a patient any other place in the village or Korhale itself would have been better for Amir but baba's word was the command the chief medicine baba did not allow him to come to the masjid but fixed him in the Saudi every morning and evening every alternate day baba went to the Saudi in the procession and slept there so Amir got baba's contact very often Amir stayed there for full 9 months and then he got a disgust for the place. So one night he steadily left the place and came to Kopargaon and stayed in a dharmshala. There he saw an old dying fakir who asked him for water. Amir brought it and gave it to him. As soon as he drank it he passed away. Now Amir was in a fix. He thought that if he went and informed the authorities he would be held responsible for the death. as he was the first and the sole informant and knew something about it he repented for his action that is leaving shirdi without baba's permission and prayed to baba he then determined to return to shirdi and same night he retreated remembering and muttering baba's name all the way 
and reached Shirdi before daybreak and became free from anxiety. Then he lived in the Saudi in perfect accordance with Baba's wishes and orders and got himself completely cured. One night it so happened that Baba cried at midnight. Oh Abdul, some devilish creature is dashing against the side of my bed. Abdul came with a lantern examining Baba's bed but found nothing. Baba asked him to examine carefully all the place and began to strike the ground with his satka. Seeing this leela of Baba, Amir thought that Baba might have suspected some serpent there. Amir could know by close contact with Baba the meaning of his words and actions. Baba then saw near Amir's cushion something moving. He asked Abdul to bring in the light and when he brought it he saw the serpent coiled up there moving its head up and down. Thereupon the serpent was immediately beaten to death. Thus Baba gave timely warning and saved Amir's life. Hemadpan Scorpio and Serpent First At Baba's recommendation Kaka Sahib Dikshit was daily reading the two works of Sri Eknath Maharaj that is Bhagavat and Bhavartha Ramayana and Hemad Pant had the good fortune to be one of the audience and the reading of the works was going on once when the portion from Ramayana relating to Hanuman's testing Ram's greatness according to his mother's instructions was being read all the listeners were spellbound Hemad Pant was one of them a big scorpion none knew where it came from jumped and sat on the right shoulder of Hemad Pant on his uparni that is apadhotar first it was not noticed but as the lord protects those who are intent on hearing his stories he casually cast a glance over his right shoulder and noticed it it was dead silent not a bit moving here or there it seemed as if it also enjoyed the reading Then, by the Lord's grace, Hemad Pant, without disturbing the audience, took the two ends of his dhotar, folded them, and brought them together, enclosing the scorpion with it. Then he went out and threw it in the garden. Second, on another occasion, some persons were sitting in the upper floor of Kaka Sahib's wada. Just before nightfall, when a serpent crept through a hole in the window frame and sat coiled up, a light was brought, though it was first dazzled. yet it sat still and moved its head up and down then many persons rushed there with sticks and cudgels but as it sat in an awkward place no blow could be dealt but hearing the noise of men the serpent went out hastily through the same hole then all the persons present there felt relieved baba's opinion One devotee named Muktara then said that it was good that the poor creature escaped. Hemadpan challenged him saying that the serpent should better be killed. There was a hot discussion between them. The former contending that serpents and such creatures should not be killed and the latter that they should be. As night came on the discussion came to an end without any decision being arrived at. Next day the question was referred to Baba who gave his settled opinion as follows God lives in all beings and creatures whether they be serpents or scorpions he is the great wire puller of the world and all beings serpents scorpions etc obey his command unless he wills it nobody can do any harm to others the world is all dependent on him and no one is independent so we should take pity and love all creatures leave off killings and be patient the lord god is the protector of all bow to shri sai peace to all om sai ram